Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, it's Thursday, uh, and that means that tonight at 6.30 p.m., there is our 180 Youth Group, which meets here at Arlington Reformed Church uh, in Poughkeepsie, New York. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great time for our teens to get together, to worship the Lord together, to spend time in the Word, and playing games together as well. It's, it's a great, uh, wonderful group, and I'm really grateful for uh, Joel and the work that he does in putting that group together and ministering to the teenagers. I have... I'm a parent of two teenagers, and they're both majorly blessed by our youth group, and I know that uh, many of uh, our other parents are as well. So many, many parents are blessed by jo Joel's work and Jordan's work. So thank you, gentlemen, and, and all those who are volunteering in that group. Last night, we had our Genesis uh, Bible study. We did our deep dive into Genesis chapter 4. Uh, Genesis chapter 4 is the study story of Cain and Abel. A story of Cain's murderous line, and um, and it ends with uh, with a couple of genealogies, and uh, yeah, it's it's just an odd little passage, um, and one of the things that just struck us, I think, was that it's a Sunday school staple, right? Teaching about Cain and Abel, and uh, you know that vital and difficult message: don't kill your own brother. <laughs> You know, um, but there's so many deep truths that are part of that passage as well. So many things that as adults, now we look at it and we're like, okay, there's there's more going on here than just a simple Sunday school lesson. And we had a great time. If you want to check out that uh, that Bible study, it's not too late. They're up on YouTube. All of our Genesis Bible studies are up on YouTube, um, and you can check them out there and participate in those. Uh, they're fantastic. On Sunday, uh, we looked at Matthew chapter 26, verses 30 through 56. Matthew 26, verses 30 through 56. And that's the story of Jesus um, in the Garden of Gethsemane. And now I'm getting confused in my head. I'm, I'm, I'm already working on this Sunday's sermon, so that's not... Gethsemane. So I have to keep my eyes on this, on this passage. Genesis, the, uh, I'm not sorry, Matthew, the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Matthew 26, verses 30 through 56. And Jesus is sorrowful, even unto death. And we talked about this in yesterday's devotional, uh, about the, the deep sorrow, the deep anguish, the depression, the confusion, the fear that Jesus even was feeling. Um, and Jesus as we said yesterday and I said on Sunday, Jesus does two great things. One is, uh, is he turns to his friends for help and tells his friends about what he's feeling. And the second is he turns to God and tells God what he's feeling uh, and submits his will to God. Um, now, Jesus tells his friends about how he's feeling and, he, uh, and he, he opens up to them and he asks them for their help. And the help that he asks them for is interesting. He asks them to come and watch with him watch and pray to watch with him to watch and pray um he, he says at first he says please remain here and watch with me um and he goes and he prays and and what does he mean by watch with me well the bible is full of uh instructions for believers to spend time watching in prayer to spend time waiting on the lord in prayer to be vigilant in prayer, uh, to be watchful in prayer. That's what Jesus is asking his friends to do, to support him in prayer, with, in intense prayer. Now, Jesus' prayer is going to be so intense that he sweats drops of blood on the ground. He is sorrowful unto death. His disciples are just confused. They don't really understand what's going on. But he asks them to, to focus. He asks them to intently spend time in prayer. Um, I was thinking about this uh, yesterday as I was reading. I'm, I'm part of a, a group who are uh, reading before its release, reading a book by Peter Schizero called Emotionally Healthy Discipleship. It's his new book that he's, he's coming out with. It's going to come out with, I think, next month. And I'm part of a, a pre-release group that's reading it and, and uh, going to be able to do some publicity for it. 
Um, it's a great book, by the way, Emotionally Healthy Discipleship. I'm really enjoying it. I'm about halfway through it right now. Um, we've used here in the church Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and Emotionally Healthy Relationships as courses in our church. Emotionally Healthy Discipleship takes those two courses and sort of picks some of the, the highlights of each course and, and puts them together into one package um, with some additional new stuff that's really helpful. I, I, uh, I'm really enjoying it. It's really helpful to me. But yesterday I was, I was sitting here, I was on my little uh, love seat there reading the book and was reading his, his part about, uh, about our need to, uh, uh, to be, um, our, our need to be transparent about what's going on in our lives, and especially in the area of grieving our losses, grieving our losses. And, um, and he was talking there about the need for us to sit and to feel the feelings that we're feeling, you know, and, and to, and to allow those feelings, the time to work through so that we can get to the other side, um, and grow as a result of, of the losses that we've suffered, that, that, uh, the grief and loss are not interruptions in the Christian life, but grief and loss are part of the fabric of Christian life and that they're to be expected. They're normal. It's, it's, it's the normal way uh, by which God uh, grows our souls. And I remember I was sitting on that couch, and I remember it was yesterday. <laughs> it's no big triumph to remember yesterday. But I, I was sitting there yesterday on that love seat, and I was uh, reading this pass, this uh, book, and I was uh, just feeling this overwhelming sense of, I need to do that. I need to take time. And I need to grieve the losses that I suffered. There's many losses that I've suffered that I just haven't taken the time to really grieve. Um, and, uh, you know, I've tried to grieve the loss of our church building. Um, I've tried to grieve some of the losses from the pandemic. Um, yesterday, before I was reading this book, and maybe this was in my mind too, yesterday we heard that Jerry Parliament is not doing well and that uh, he could be in his last days. Uh, so I was thinking about Jerry and, and about Judy and uh, you know, thinking about the losses that, uh, that sort of are part and parcel of the Christian life. Taking time to, to be in the presence of God. What Jesus wanted from his disciples here was that they would just be with him. Just be with me in this time of grief that he was feeling. Um, and that watching, that attentiveness, supporting in prayer, that's what Jesus wanted from his disciples. Now, he wanted it from his disciples for two reasons. One, he needed the support. That's the key. That's one key thing. Jesus needed this their support. It was grievous to him to not have their support. But as is always the case with Jesus, he had a second motive, and that was for the sake of his disciples. He says to them, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. He tells them that the spirit is willing, but their flesh is weak. Uh, this is, uh, of course, these are the disciples who momentarily are going to desert Jesus. And Peter, especially, uh, in the passage we're going to be talking about this Sunday, Peter will deny Jesus three times. Um, Jesus knows that they need that time in watchful prayer just as much as he needs their support. Jesus asks for their support for his good, but also for their good because Jesus was always thinking about his disciples, even to the very end. Um, watchful prayer, taking time to, to bring our thoughts and our prayers, to bring our feelings to the Lord, um, and to listen to him and to let him teach us in the middle of it. We Sometimes as Christians, we feel like that's a luxury. Oh, unhurried time with the Lord, that's a luxury. Um, but I don't think it's meant to be a luxury. I think that's meant to be the everyday stuff of Christian life. Uh, taking time to watch 
and to pray. I want to encourage you in your daily schedule, uh, don't, go, don't let the day go by so fast that you don't take time to watch and pray. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for the fact that you do draw near to us as we draw near to you, that you uh, are uh, with us when we watch and we pray. God, I pray that you'd help us to watch and pray with those who are in times of grief. Help us to watch and pray with Jerry and with Judy right now at this challenging time. Um, help us to be watchful and in prayer about the other, other losses and other griefs that we've suffered. Help us to, to be able to sit with you and let you teach us in this time to shape us, to mold us in the middle of these, uh, these dark hours. God, I pray for your, your perseverance and your help in, this, in times of suffering. Lord, we love you. We know that you love us. Lord, I pray for tonight's youth group meeting. I pray that you would bless our teens, bless Joel, bless Jordan, uh, bless all those who are investing their time in our, our teenagers. And Lord, may you be blessed uh, as our teens turn their hearts towards you. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.